Hello and welcome to Cooking Up the Past. I'm Oliver and this is Vicky and throughout lockdown we've been exploring different ways of looking into our collections through our cookery books. And the recipe that we're going to be cooking today is from the Edinburgh Book of Plain Cookery Recipes. Um, this was first published in 1879 and then reprinted in 1932. Um, and it was produced by the Edinburgh College of Domestic Science, also known as Athol Crescent. And if you keep watching, you can find out more about this really important Edinburgh institution. And you can see us making lots of soda scones. Right, let's bake like it's 1932. First, sieve the flour. Now that's a bit of an issue. Uh, I don't own a sieve. I add the bicarbonate of soda, the tartar, and the salt, and enough buttermilk to make a soft dough. After that, I turn it all onto a floured board, knead it, roll out half an inch in thickness, cut in four, four. bake on a warm griddle until risen and warm, and then turn it over and bake it until it's dry in the centre. Okay, first things first, I need to find a big bowl. I don't think I've got one, so I mean, I'll just rummage around for a bit and see what I can get. I've got a pan and a dishwasher, which I'll, I'll clean and then I'll, I'll use that as a bowl. Clean pan. What I'm going to do now is is get half a pound of flour. Uh, ye. Half a pound of flour. And half a teaspoon of bicarb. Half a teaspoon cream of tartar. I'll put it all in. I don't know if that was half a teaspoon or not, to be honest. So we'll see. Quite a lot of salt, but I am trusting the College of Domestic Science to know what they're doing. Salt, salt, salt. Salt, salt. Sea, sea salt. That's, that's not the right type of salt. Fish. Yeah. Then a gill of buttermilk, which we've worked out is about 118 millilitres. I'm going to do milk and sour it with the juice of half a lemon, which I'm hoping will do the right thing, but we'll see. Oliver has got buttermilk, so if his scones turn out delicious and mine are disgusting, then I think we'll know why. Mm, yeah, yeah, put some in. So put it all in. Um, I didn't save it because I don't have a sieve. Sorry about that. And we need to be sieving this. That's it, the ingredients are all ready and I'm going to make a start on bringing it all together now. So I've got my flour sieved and I'm going to add the bicarb cream of tartar and salt. Then it says add enough milk to make a soft dough. So I'll start slow I think. Oh I think the lemon has worked to sour the milk there. really hope this is going to be the equivalent of buttermilk. Uh, I'm wishing I was Oliver and had buttermilk now. Okay. I think I'm going to stop there with the milk. I just don't want to make it all sticky and goopy. It's, this isn't going well already. This isn't, this isn't nice. I'm supposed to be kneading it, aren't I? Uh, is it uh, soft, soft dough? Turn into a, into a flour board. Roll out half an inch in thickness. Now I've come across another issue here. I don't own a rolling pin. Um, I have to improvise. 
Now, I need to roll it out to half an inch thick. So it makes quite a small amount as well, this, this recipe. If you like, if I am just gonna roll it to half an inch, we're probably about there. And it's only to be cut into four, it's not huge. So it's cut across in four. Get my fat. Which I'm guessing means cut it into four pieces rather than just score it. I think. Hmm. I need Oliver Cam now to work out what he's doing. Half an inch? Is that? Yeah, that's 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 half an inch for me. Okay, next stage. Cooking goods. I need to warm up, in theory, a griddle pan. I don't really have a griddle pan, so I'm going with a heavy sauce pan. I don't think I'll put it up too high. Yeah, I think these are they're quite thick, they're going to take a little while to cook through. So I'm going to go with kind of a medium heat, I think. The moment of scone jeopardy. I think my pan's warm enough. I'm going for it. The recipe doesn't say to put anything in the pan, you know, any butter or anything like that to cook them. Just, just loads of butter to be honest. I've got to eat it, haven't I? No one be healthy. So we're going to have to keep an eye on them, so they're half an inch thick at the moment. I've got to notice when they're starting to look risen. The Edinburgh College of Domestic Science began life as the Edinburgh School of Cookery and Domestic Economy in 1875. Its founders, Christian Guthrie Wright and Louisa Stevenson, were heavily involved in furthering the education of women. In founding the college, they had two aims, to improve women's access to higher education and to improve the diets of working class families. They began to hold lectures at the Royal Museum, now the National Museum of Scotland, as well as arranging lectures and demonstrations across the country. In 1891, the school moved to Athol Crescent in Edinburgh's West End, where its main campus remained until 1970. It became the Edinburgh College of Domestic Science in 1930, but to many in the city it will always be Athol Crescent. Many developments followed, including a broader curriculum, and the institution eventually became Queen Margaret's University. Museums and Galleries Edinburgh holds a collection of objects relating to the Edinburgh College of Domestic Science. It includes textbooks and samples of work completed by students of needlework courses. So you'll see the uh, that tree rising rather nicely. And I, I didn't expect that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Starting to go a bit brown. Brownness is happening just a little bit. Ooh, and now you can start to smell something other than hot pan. There's a nice sort of, well, I guess it can't be yeasty smell because there's no yeast in there, but they've got that sort of, do you know, it's a bit of a scony smell a bready, scony kind of a smell. Now I feel like I need, I need scone hotline with Oliver now. Very fiery. Yeah, see it turns out you, you can't just guess. Um, we knew. This really is scone jeopardy. I think I'm going to have to make a call and I'm going to go with calling them, I think I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with calling them done. That's it. Looking good. Literally hot off the press. And let's go and check in with Oliver and see how he's got on and do the grand scone tasting. <laughs> right, there we are. Let's see how have yours turned out. You, you, you show yours first. <laughs> Okay, that, that's enor That's actually enormous. I d well, I didn't know how much a half an inch was really. So, um. oh, oh, 
we've got depth variation. Looks tasty though, and you've you've got a nice a nice brown colour. I kind of went for it on on a low heat, but for a long time, and and in the end, I just I, I chickened out. I thought they've been in the pan for ages. I'm going to take them out. You look like you've gone for more heat. No, I think what I did was I didn't want to burn the pan, so I uh, put loads of butter in the pan. Ah, ah. Now that's an interesting one because I got to that point in the recipe where it says warm up a griddle. And I thought there were no instructions about any fat to be applied. So I, no. I, went, I went with none. So. But yours still was quite brown. It does, but it was in there a long time. I'm going to cut through the middle though, because you know it said to make it dry in the middle. And I've got no idea if I've got a doughy mess. No, I haven't brought a knife with me to this recording studio. So, um... <laughs> it looks... Mm, I wouldn't exactly say it's dry inside. I reckon if... No... If, I don't think I wouldn't be getting a Paul Hollywood handshake. I think he'd be like pushing it, looking a bit skeptical, to be honest. I've just I've torn it in a completely different way to you. I can absolute idiot. So, but I, I, to be honest, it's not very dry inside. It's a bit like okay. A bit done. Have you have you had a sneaky test taste test yet or not? I I haven't. Okay, I'm I'm gonna go for it, but but I'm gonna be posh. I'm gonna put some butter on. And right, con con am I being done. controversial if I put some jam on? Do you think I that? don't know. I, I don't know how they're supposed to be served, so I might just wolf it down, see what happens. Okay, I'm going to just go with a bit of butter. Hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking quite chewy. Hmm. There's a, there's a bit of a tatty scone thing Still going chewing. on. Still To me, it tastes like sweet Play-Doh. <laughs> I'm not sure that this is what the College of Domestic Science had in mind. I'm sure they had sure? in mind, like, fluffy, light deliciousness. And I think we've both got doughiness. I don't mind it. I think I could... No. It was probably better when it was a bit, a bit warmer, but I've since carried it. Mm. You know, about and about, and showing it off. <laughs> showing your scone babies off to the flat. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, yeah, I'm, I think it's not that I'm not going to finish it, um, but I think we could probably have done with some College of Domestic Science tutors to give us some more handy hints, I reckon. Yeah, I imagine so. There weren't any of those to hand at the, at the time. I'm so still eating. If you were going to give yourself a mark out of ten, what would you give yourself, do you think? Six and a half. Oh, oh. What about you? Not bad, not bad. I was going to go for three. <laughs> yes, I might reevaluate mine then. Two. <laughs> Thanks for watching Cooking Up the Past. We'll post the recipe for this bake below and keep watching for more recipes in the future. And if you'd like to find out more about the old Riki Retail project and also see more of the objects we are uncovering, you can visit our website at edinburghmuseums.org.uk.